Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stuff I Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. And welcome to part two. Who knew we were doing a part two? <laughs> uh, not me. But you know what? Just so you know, Annie, yes? before we jump into this part two, this is award-winning show. <laughs> they not only won... Uh, they were nominated, rather, for some primetime Emmys. Yeah. They lost the Game of Thrones. They lost the Game of Thrones. Oh, yes. well. Yes. Part two of once. <laughs> they lost the Game of Thrones. So I feel like that's, you know, valid. <laughs> uh, but they were nominated for, like, Teen Choice Awards as well and uh, different Choice Awards. So this is a legit show. I'm excited. This really was one of my favorite shows. It is a legit show. I have yet to see it. And yes, we are talking about Once and we are talking about Regina, a uh, fictional character from Once. And what we're doing is sort of a fun holiday end of year exchange where Samantha is taking over my fictional women around the world segment. Uh, and I hope that you're having fun. <laughs> yes, I am having fun. And I love the fact that I'm making a two-parter. I can't just do... I just stick around. You know when I to grab onto something. Yes. I can't hold back. And yes, this is part two. I guess we should say that there's some spoilers mm-hmm. if you haven't watched it and want to watch it. I do tell the, I think, finale. So go watch it, all seven seasons of it, and then come back, I guess. <laughs> yes. If you watch the first season, you're good. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, but it can be fun. Like, I've just been going on this ride. I have not seen it, but I've been having a great time. (laughs) It's very, a lot of shockers. A lot. A lot of shockers. Uh, But yeah, let's let's get back into it. Season two, we have a resurfacing of Cora, her mother, who also is kind of like blindly like, I want to make her happy and being powerful and getting her revenge will make my daughter happy. So she's another antagonist, a part of this. The entirety of the second one, though, is not only her getting back her magic and and proving herself, but actually trying to redeem herself. So we talked about Regina's art before. Me and you, Annie, which yes. I said that she, that's her thing. It's like, yes, she is evil and unhappy, but and she does a really lot of bad things, which I love how we gloss over all the deaths to give them the redeeming arc. But I'm like, man, she sure did kill a lot of people. Well, uh, speaking of very briefly, um, I, when I did the whole, I did a whole episode about redemption and female women villains once came up, because a lot of times we do that with, say, your Darth Vader or your Kylo Ren, (laughs) but we don't do it with women. With women, we're like, yeah, die. We don't want to redeem them. But they gave once as an example of like a character that actually did kind of have a more fulfilling arc of a a woman villain other than just, yeah, she did bad, so let's kill her. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right, right. Whoopsie. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) My bad. Just saying. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know that, that that is yeah. So she in the t- second season is trying to redeem herself. It, it, it's the battle. Her trying to figure out what she wants, what she isn't. Lies that have happened, and her undoing it, and and her doing better for Henry. All these things. Uh, at this time, Emma and Snow White get trapped in the enchanted forest, uh, so the other world, and they're trying to get back. Then we bring in a whole lot of new characters, including Hook. Again, we bring back Cora, as we said. We've got Lancelot as a part of this conversation soon that comes into play. I believe we have Mulan coming into play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mulan. Uh, we have Sleeping Beauty, Aurora, um, all of them. And then we have little folktales. Like, we have uh, a soul eater coming in trying to eat Regina. So, Rumpelstiltskin is trying to get his revenge on the evil queen. So, all these things. Mm -hmm. Because she had manipulated his true love away from him and locked her up. Who was Belle, by the way? So, he's Mm -hmm. Rumpelstiltskin, but also the beast because he Mm holds her in prison. Uh, Mm -hmm. And then she falls in love with him. (laughs) <laughs> so we have all of that in play. But this entire time, she's trying to figure herself out and what side she wants to be in. But she also recognizes that at one point, Cora is around and she's trying to get make sure to save and protect her son from her, her evil mother, who mm-hmm. she loves, but also is scared of. Rightly so. Mm-hmm. And so we come back with Emma and Snow coming back and and and. Regina had the chance of, like, blowing up the only access for them to come back that could have actually killed Snow and um, Emma, but she doesn't. She chooses the better, even almost sacrificing herself for it. Um, and with that, 
they all come together. Emma tries to give her a chance. Um, and it's like, you know, you can have visitation. So nothing is legality. <laughs> I'm like, essentially, the bi- biological mother should have no rights whatsoever. But yet here, none, none of that exists. So mm-hmm. she's like, yeah, you can, you can hang with us. You can come around, all these different things. And so she's slowly trying to get her redeeming arc back, but everybody's kind of like, eh, is she, maybe, maybe she isn't. Then we come into like where she figures out that no one believes that she's trying because she still has a temper, she still has things. And then her mother comes into the picture and her mother tries to discredit her, make her look bad, like she may have killed or kidnapped somebody in the town. Cricket, who ends up being a psychiatrist in the town, you know, (laughs) because, you know. (laughs) It's better to say the uh-huh. truth. And so she frames, the mother frames her to show her how people will turn on her so quickly. Oh, uh, yeah. So her goodness for a minute turns back and she's deciding mm. to play on the bad team again, which hooks on that team for a minute as well. Mm. Um, and she's trying to get her son back and they're going to live happily after, ever after all these things. But that turns awry, and then Peter Pan comes in the picture and destroys everything and tries to almost kill her because she's killed so many people that people want to kill her, obviously, um, including this random man from the real world. He car- She killed him while the son escaped, and uh, the son came back to try to get revenge on her. So much revenge. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> so much revenge. Uh, but then she finally, after the realizing she was in danger and being rescued, she comes back to playing for the good team, quote unquote, uh, to help rescue her son, who has been kidnapped at one point, and goes to Never Neverland. Now we go to Never Leverland. Peter Pan, by the way, is the bad guy in this, in the entirety of the thing. Who was the father of Rumpelstiltskin? Whoa. <sighs> Wow. Okay. But Regina goes with Emma and the whole crew, and they're trying to go find Henry because uh, they have kidnapped Henry because he is the one true believer. Hmm. And mm-hmm. all of this. And so they need that to break spells or undo magic or re- redo magic, all these things. And Regina sighs with them. But even there, she kind of goes back and forth about playing her way and being with the evil team to do whatever she has to to get her son. And at one point, they all get captured by Peter Pan. And he Henry's in a coma because he Henry's heart is now in Peter Pan. And, like, he's trying to replace him, essentially. And... They get trapped by this tree of regret. So every any regret that you have, it keeps to on you tighter and tighter and tighter, or guilt, all those things. And it turns out Regina has no guilt or a regret because it brought her to her son, Henry. So she mm-hmm. rescues all of them and is able to get her son. And then they all go back. Uh-oh, there's a flip. And somehow Peter Pan and Henry's body switched. Uh, they don't know this. They trapped Henry in a box, Pandora's oh, box. Oh, God. <laughs> um, and and it, Regina is so excited to have her son back, but she knows when they go back to the real world, she'll still be the evil queen. And that's the thing. is like the entirety of the thing is being called the evil queen and not being able to let go of that, not being able to find her happy ending because she ruined all of that, but she's trying very, 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 very hard and all that. And she's got some of the best lines and some of the best outfits. Just so you know. <laughs> okay. Um, and she comes back and Henry all of a sudden changes his tune, doesn't want to stay with Emma and wants to stay with her. She's ecstatic, uh, wanting to believe this is real. Turns out he was just trying to get to her to get to the magical vault to be able to do the mm-hmm. curse again. <laughs> they keep trying to do this one curse, by the way. And so... <laughs> She gets knocked out and all these and like tricked and she's so upset that she couldn't recognize Henry because she was so uh, eager to be loved by him, essentially, yeah. that all these things happen. Finally, things go away and they get rid of, oh, no, I mixed this up because there was one point that she does sacrifice her relationship with Henry to save them. So there is a thing that happens where this curse thing was uh, had a safe a safety net that if she Mm. wanted to blow it all up she could and they'll just all return to the enchanted land and forest except it's only those who were born there so emma and henry are not so they would go without them and so what she did is erase because there's a lot of erasing memories so many erasing (laughs) memories she erased (laughs) henry and emma's memory and then tracked back and gave him good memories as if emma never 
gave him up for adoption. Mm. And so that means he would forget completely about all of them, mm. which is very, 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 very sad. <laughs> So she does that, sacrifices, and she's so miserable when she returns to the Enchanted Forest that she does anything and everything that she can to try to stop hurting from the loss of her son at that point in time. Um, and then we get introduced to the Wicked Witch, who is her <laughs> half-sister. What? Cora had a daughter that I just I feel like it's a backplay, and so they, they become whole antagonistic, and it, like all the entire time, Regina is trying to save everybody from her. So yes... I think you kind of understand <laughs> Regina's background at this point, right? She finally, the one thing she's never able to have is a true love, mm. which I find fascinating. She finally does with Robin Hood, whom she meets when they get, you know, cursed back to the Enchanted Forest, and then they get sent back to the real world because of another curse. So many curses. Um, mm -hmm. But they forget their mem they get, lose their memories, but there is an attraction between her and Robin Hood, who was always intended for him. But because she just wanted to be miserable, she oh. pushed that aside because she wanted to continue her revenge. Oh. Instead of going for happiness. And then you know that's one of my favorite tropes. Yep, yep, they could have been happy. They could have been happy. But you go for revenge you instead. Let it go. She mm. did. Uh, you would love this part because Tw Tinkerbell's the one that helped her find this love. And when she didn't, she's like, Why would you let this happen? Why would you not be happy? This why would you why do you want to be miserable? You could have been happy. Mm. This is when I shout at my fan fiction screen all the time. There you go. <laughs> I'm sure that's another thing. But yeah, so she could have met him, didn't, and all these other things come into play. She finally meets him again. They're happy, or so we thought. Oh. They're not happy. <laughs> They're not happy. They're so not happy that, because... Uh, Emma gets thrown back in time at one point, back into the Enchanted Forest, but way before Snow White and Prince Charming meets, accidentally screws it up and tries to fix it. And by the way, Hook is a part of this as well. Um, that she messes with the timeline and uh, Miriam was supposed to die by the hands of the queen way back when, um, gets saved and brought back to the present time and where Robin was happy with their son, with Regina. Oh, but oh no. no, here comes oh. the wife. So that gets a big foil into that plan. And this is where Frozen is introduced. Mm. And the Wicked Witch is still a part of this conversation. And Regina to save Miriam's life because she has a spell where um, Miriam's heart was heart touched by ice, much like who? Yes, yeah. Anna, uh, Anna in Frozen. Yeah, Anna. <laughs> so the only cure, though, is for them to leave the magic so that that can't kill her. So they leave to go to New York or Boston. No, they go to New York. <laughs> New York and Boston are the two only places they go to, by the way. Uh, oh. New York, uh, where Robin tries to take care of Miriam and start their relationship again. But mm -hmm. surprise, it's not actually Miriam. It's the Wicked Witch, who we thought were dead, was dead a long time ago. But she ah. switched bodies and tricked uh, Robin and ended up having his baby. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but Robin still chose Regina. And they thought they were going to be happy. There's this whole thing where this other plot was the writer who did all of this and can create all of this can change the future. So she tried to capture him to get her happy ending. <sighs> that doesn't happen. Oh, wow. <laughs> that doesn't happen, and they all get thrown into back to the Enchanted Forest. Emma becomes the dark one, and Regina's trying to save her and pretends, pretends to be the savior, which is what Emma is called as the uh, curse breaker type of, she's called known as the savior, and mm -hmm. she's been prophesied as the savior. And Regina tries to take that on because Emma's now the dark one, and she can't use her powers or she'll turn evil, all these things. But all of this leads to Robin dying. Oh, <laughs> Uh, with Robin dying, but they take away that and someone else dies for him and they go to Hades and we have Hades in place. And we're talking about the, <laughs> both the tale and the, the Disney, yes. Disney movie, which Hades is like a reversal of Storybrooke, but broken. Okay. So all these, and Cora is a part of this and, all, and Regina's father is a part of this, who she killed, by the way. So Regina killed her own father because she had to kill the thing that she loved the most in order to get this curse. Oh, wow. And at that time, it was her father. Okay. Who was in Hades. And oh, no. <laughs> her mother has to, like, try to get them out because Hades hates her. And mm -hmm. they're ruining his land because they're bringing in hope. 
quick little oh. hope here. Um, and so he's trying to get Cora to get her out to save Regina. But that also includes manipulating the father and sending the father to even deeper hell <laughs> if Cor- uh, Regina refuses to leave. Like, all these things. Oh. But in the end, we have a nice little, like, he ends up sacrificing himself, which sends him to heaven. Uh, but he gets to meet his uh, grandson, who was named after him. So the dad's name is Henry. She named Henry after him. And it was a nice little moment. And she gets a redemptive moment of like, ah, I didn't choose the wrong thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So we have all of that. But during this time, uh, Robin is with her and they're trying to save everybody. And they finally do save them. They go back up. And Hades goes up and he ends up killing Robin and he really kills Robin this time. So Robin has died a few times and at this point, finally, he dead. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So she loses the love and all these things and Mm. she's heartbroken trying to figure out what to do and can't get a happy ending. Uh, She's still with Henry, and Henry has really helped, and the two of them are together for the most part. And Emma and Regina are doing an amazing job co-parenting. They did a great job towards the end. They finally got it together. Regina kind of becomes better. She even tries to tear away at her evil self to be a part of her her darkness in her heart, Um, which came back as a life lesson because that evil queen, which was hilarious and did a lot of, you know, foiling for the entirety of the plots, was the lesson of, like, loving your true self, even the bad part of yourself. Oh, But that evil queen found, because there was an alternate world where it was written, <laughs> where Robin Hood did exist, they got together, but not Regina. Oh, whoa. So Regina's happy ending, from what I remember, and, and listeners, y'all can correct me, is that she got to be queen that was loved by the people. No. And I believe that's the finale. I didn't watch, like, I only watched that part once because I'm not going to lie. After a few times, I was like, okay, I'm done with Regina being so sad. <laughs> it was so sad. Why can't yeah. this girl just be happy? <laughs> is what I want to know. Um, but yeah, so she went through all of that with her finally getting the love and respect of the people and the fact that she has sacrificed herself, even though she was no nonsense. There's even a beautiful point between her and Snow where they both talked about being wrong uh, mm. in their relationships in the past. Of course, you know, trying to kill everybody is still wrong. But uh, a redemptive <laughs> arc, if you will for mm-hmm. both of them and even for her understanding her mother and then her and the Wicked Witch had a big falling in and out and in and out and they finally were sisters and then they finally got it together. So that's Regina in a whole. And I will say one of the things about her that people love, love, love and also <laughs> also again hate but that she was ridiculously realistic and that's the whole pragmatic bit like while uh, Snow White was like if we believe it it would mm. be, and Regina's like, okay, while you're doing that, let me go handle this over here on this end. Let me get these <laughs> evil people. Of course, mm, not the best <laughs> in the way she solved it, <laughs> but she wasn't always wrong. And I will say, I think at the cancellation of the show in the end, it ended up being really sad for her because of the way it kind of abruptly ended for some, I think a lot of people kind of just had enough and um, wanted to, because uh, it just kind of repeats itself after a certain mm-hmm. amount of time. And so some of the people who are portraying these characters were kind of tired of the same characters and decided to uh, opt out um, on it. But she really wasn't one of them because she kind of, she came back in, I believe, for the Alice in Wonderland bit, which was the spinoff. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's Regina, <laughs> whom I love hate. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like, though, she had a really, um, she had a bunch of, like, nuanced, complicated relationships, which can be rare for your Disney villainess. Um, She had story arcs that, uh, where she changed and then reversed and changed. Like, it it sounds like she had a lot of, she had a lot going on as a character uh, and that she was a really interesting character. 
She did. Um, and Lana Perea really was the making of this character. And she talked about the relationship between uh, the characters. She talked about uh, how she finally became friends with Emma. She says in an interview with Bustle, We know they possess magic, and when they work together, they're so much more powerful than they are apart. Emma needs, needs her power team behind her, and Regina is a huge part of that. I think that what we've seen in the past with Emma being the dark one, as I mentioned before, uh, it was Regina that was constantly trying to talk some sense into her and vice versa. That's their dynamic. It's what they do for each other. They're each other's conscience. And we'll do, we'll, and so we'll definitely see more of that in those seasons to come. And she was. As in fact, uh, she was the only one Emma trusted to make the right decision, not the heartfelt decision, but the right decision. Um, mm. Yeah, so that's kind of the level that they were at. Um, and then just talking about her relationship with the sister coming up and how she wanted it to be a healthy relationship for the two of them. Like, it was really, really, really cute about them wanting to be family, as they say. <laughs> how did Fast and Furious take that word and ruin it for me? They did. I'm sorry. Oh. Um, in <laughs> fact, though, there is a whole story written, published, about Regina's childhood. Like, they wrote a whole fictional fairy tale based on re- this show and Regina's childhood. Hmm. Interesting. hmm Well, I mean, clearly it resonated. I think anything like that where you're going to have a bunch of fandoms coming together and playing in interesting ways, um, you will have things like that. And I'm sure, listeners, please write in if you've read this story, Regina's backstory yeah. that they published. Yeah. I mean, apparently she was a very sweet person up until that point. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. I mean, certainly there's something to be said about a delicious villain who you also can relate to. She's so. got that deep voice, too. Ooh, yeah. okay. Yeah. She's got a growl that makes mm. it perfect. When okay. she's being evil. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to check it out. I have that and Enchanted on my list. So I'm going to do it. Yes. And listeners, please write in. If you have any thoughts about this, because I love that we heard from someone already. <laughs> when you mentioned I'd love it. that. Please send me more information, Elodie. Yes. Oh, please do. Well, if you would like to contact us, you can. Our email is Steph Media Mom Steph at iHeartMedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at Mom Stuff Podcast or on Instagram and TikTok at Stuff I Never Told You. We have a tea public store and a book where we talk about a lot of fictional characters. Um, uh, thanks as always to our super producer Christine, our executive producer Maya, and our contributor Joey. Thank you. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, you can check out the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. <laughs> 